but they regenerate one HP before they can die. And a so ton of those Zerglings are... Oh, look at all those just one health Zerglings just remaining around. So, uh, but here we go. We have pretty bad positioning on the units here from Team Destiny, but of course they denied the gold, so they're willing to accept the poor positioning there temporarily, but it's going to be hard for them to Man. make their way back out. Um, on the other hand, though, we have a big drop coming in for power. That is going to deny this next base, I would imagine, uh, for Minigun, because unfortunately, yeah, he's going to have to work with a lot more units. Now Zerglings joining the fight, so... This uh, this little drop will go away. There's still not much minigun and Destiny can do to break out of that that position there. But if they had nidus worms, they no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, the structural rocks. That's a that's a that's a path. They could do that. That is true. <laughs> That'll work. But um, That'll do Protec big. Protec is actually maxed supply. Destiny not quite there yet. Only 140. But once those ultras start rolling out. Uh, I'm sure that'll catch up quite quickly. Good bungle there on a little contingent of roaches of Protec. If you have one more, it's nice. There goes another bungle, and these others should be able to clean out these roaches without any additional problems. Yep, absolutely. So the last couple of the roaches are going to go down. Minigun and Destiny have gotten themselves away. We do see a third base coming up for power now, but Protec has not been able to establish his. He has a ton of drones on just a few mineral patches. Most of his have been mined out, and oh! What? There's a drop. It was. Destiny had a drop, and had a drop happen to him. He did put down a bunch of spine crawlers, though, and so we'll be able to clean it up. We have Protec and Power, though. So many units. That is true. <laughs> 800 think, food engagement. There's a couple of ghosts in that mixture as well. I did spot them walking around. Three more gateways coming down for Minigun now as well. Still rolling those upgrades, getting Blink Ultras now on the way for Destiny. And, and Fester Ultra is pretty nice. Those feelings can actually be very annoying, though, uh, when you've got that composition, because they just get in the way of the Ultralisks. Yeah, certainly. And, um... Now, I'm curious to see how he works this in together. We still haven't seen any sort of a Nidus or anything like that. And a Nidus would be pretty effective right now. Um, there's not a lot of detection or anything along those lines. And there are spots for those Nidus worms to go in. Right here would be a really nice spot oh, for one. So key. It would. <laughs> All right. So both of these teams are just positioning against each other for the meantime. Take a look at the supply. 189, 167 to 191, 167. Both these teams pretty even, although Destiny and Minigun have way more workers, uh, which means that they are going to have a... Um, easier time. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, they're going to have an easier time reinforcing, but they're going to be a little bit weaker in a straight line engagement. So uh, Minigun is receiving this attack over here to the left. At the same time, we have a drop down here to the right. But there are a ton of spine crawlers, but the hatchery still might fall in. Taylor uh, tentacles have failed you. That is true. No uh, no sort of unit going to, or go ahead and help going back against those. But we do have Neural Parasite going down on a number of these Vikings as well, helping to take out some of these Overseers, which is kind of cute. Now these Vikings are actually killing themselves. And these Colossi are doing so much freaking damage. Wow, huge supply advantage now for Destiny and Minigun. That and, was insane. And just, at the same time, Destiny didn't even use his speedlings in that. He's just running those around here to deny bases on the left-hand side. There were fungals on every single unit there, <laughs> and the Colossi just ripping through perfect range. Uh, uh, b uh, b uh, nine b Brood Lords. Nine Brood Lords coming out now for Hack Protag. I don't know uh, how effective they're going to be. Really, there's not a ton of anti-air. Really, just uh, that fungal and maybe some infested Terrans might be able to stop it. Oh, uh, a couple of High Templar in the mix now. They do have Psionic Storm. I did see that in the production tab earlier. Psionic Storm on those Lings and Marauders, which will certainly help out in addition to this fungal big storm. Not repelling their opponents. They just walk right through it. And Broodlord is going to have to try and do the bulk of the damage here. I think Destiny has enough, more, more than enough wings to actually handle this entire ground force alone. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be able to make his way in. Oh, those storms are so clutch. Those Marauders just taking it. Oh, man. And Power and Protect know what they have to leave, so we are going to head to game number three. Yay, game three. It's a series tied up now. Destiny and Minigun actually flexing some some nice Zerg Protoss muscle there. That was pretty cool. They got up to Colossi and Infestors way before their opponents could, well, were really anywhere close on tech. So uh, basically just took advantage of that, denied enough bases when necessary, and stayed ahead. And we do have 3,400-ish viewers right now, and that is about three times... Well, maybe just a little bit less than three times, so we do still need a few more hundred. <laughs> Come on in and tell all your friends on Twitter, Facebook, anyone you know that enjoys watching StarCraft 2. This is an incredibly unique tournament. I can't say it enough. This is the first time I've seen anything like this, and I know that uh, it's the first time a lot of you have seen anything like this because I watch StarCraft every day.